Welcome to Lecture Online, and here's another aspect of knowing how to draw Lewis structures and how to figure out the structure of molecules in general. So what we're going to take a look at here is what we call the bond dissociation energy, the amount of energy required to pull a bond apart. And the first type of bond we're going to look at is the diatomic molecules. So, and as an example, let's say we have a hydrogen gas molecule, H2, and we want to separate those two into two separate hydrogens like that. How much energy does that take? and it takes 436.4 kilojoules per mole of that gas. In comparison, chlorine gas, Cl2, when you want to pull those two molecules, uh, those two chlorines apart into two separate atoms, you'll notice that that only takes 242.7 kilojoules per mole. So it would be easier to pull two chlorines apart than it would be to pull two hydrogens apart. And knowing that, knowing the bond energies, it'll help us figure out in certain situations which bonds are more likely to form and which bonds are more or less likely to form simply based upon their dissociation energies. Now, what that also means is when two atoms come together and form a bond, they will release that energy because that's a more stable state. And so when two hydrogens come together and form hydrogen gas, H2, that will then release this amount of energy. So that is a very likely scenario that's likely to happen. So just to, for um, a reference, let's just take a, some of these, take a look at some of these bond energy. So hydrogen bonded to hydrogen that the, releases a lot of energy when it combines, takes a lot of energy to pull them apart. Fluorine, of course, we know it's very electronegative. So when fluorine bonds to hydrogen, it it uh, will release an enormous amount of energy, 568 kilojoules per mole, rather than just the hydrogen the hydrogen bond. So hydrogen-fluorine bonds are harder to break than hydrogen-hydrogen bonds. So that's good to know. Hydrogen-chlorine bonds are easier to break because chlorine is not as electronegative and so less likely to hold on to it as strongly. Hydrogen and bromine, you can see that's even less, and hydrogen iodine, that's even less, as the electronegatives decrease. So there's definitely a, a relationship between the electronegatives and the bond dissociation energies. Now take a look over here. The nitrogen to nitrogen bond, which is a triple bond, is a very, very powerful, very, very strong bond. Matter of fact, it is this bond that protects us from the very harmful X-rays and gamma rays radiation that come in from space because when it hits this molecule, this molecule is able to absorb that energy and the energy is then used to break those nitrogen molecules apart. But besides from that, just realize, very, very high energy. Oxygen to oxygen is a double bond, again, a protection mechanism in the atmosphere, absorbing very high energy rays coming in from space. The, this would be the UV radiation because it has very high dissociation energy. Fluorine to fluorine, which is interesting, it's only 150 kilojoules per mole, even though the fluorine uh, molecules, uh, I mean the, the fluorine have very high electronegativity, they're relatively easy to break. So fluorine makes a lot stronger bond with hydrogen than it does with itself. Kind of an interesting aspect here. Chlorine and bromine, uh, also not nearly as strong as these over here. And then you see iodine to iodine, which is a, a very a relatively weak bond and easy to break. So there's some interesting aspects, and we will learn later why in the next, when we tackle the next chapter, next concept, when we start looking at the actual structure of the bonds themselves, we'll understand why these association energies are the way they are. So anyway, just a quick review, and again, the relationship between understanding this helps understand the structure of the atoms and how the bonds are made and why they're made one, rel, rel, uh, one in favor, I should say, to the other bond. Anyway, there you go. That's one, and we'll look at the non-molecules in the next set.